What is up, YouTube? It's Kuda Below here coming at you with another exciting video. Okay, so in this one, I'm going to be talking about red cabbage sauerkraut, why I make it, why I like it, etc., etc. By the way, quick shout out to Peerless Coffee. They make great stuff. Thank my cousin for sending me a bag of this stuff. It was delicious. Anyways, two reasons why I like red cabbage versus the green cabbage. So reason number one is because I read an article somewhere that said that if you make your sauerkraut, this is homemade, no extra added preservatives, none of that kind of BS. This is homemade red cabbage sauerkraut. One cup of red cabbage sauerkraut. So this is this is the size of one cup, right? One cup. One cup of this stuff of the red cabbage sauerkraut has something like 600 to 700 milligrams of vitamin C. So definitely good for the antioxidant qualities. You get the idea. The second reason why I like the red cabbage versus the green cabbage is because I read other articles, right? I watch YouTube videos just like everybody else. Facts. So another article that I read said that the red cabbage has just a little, just a little, like a little extra more antioxidant qualities than say the the green cabbage would so that's why i use red cabbage in my cabbage sauerkraut this is the raw stuff that's shredded red cabbage this is what it looks like after the fermentation process and after it all looks you get the idea okay so three ingredients in my red cabbage sauerkraut pretty simple Red cabbage, right? If you can grow your own, that's the best because that way you know exactly when into the process of making it, growing it, etc. Uh, if you can't do that, my options were basically like a farmer's market. Uh, make sure you make sure I went to like a you know a good solid vendor, somebody that had a reputation of having, you know, the non-GMO organic, somebody who grows their own stuff, like a farmer would be the ideal. You can't at farmer's market, ding, 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 get it. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. Third option on my list was something like a Whole Foods type market, sprouts, you know, that kind of vibe, something that's organic, non-GMO, etc. And then like my second to the last option was something like a, like a Trader Joe's type store, right? So it's still on par with like a Sprouts Whole Foods. And then my very last option would be something like just a regular old market, Ralph's, Vaughn's, you know, wherever. Anyways, you get the idea. Red cabbage. Uh, second ingredient is the Himalayan pink salt. Okay. So why Himalayan pink salt versus let's say regular table salt. Supposedly I have yet to find the actual article post down in the description there down below. If you found that article, but supposedly the Himalayan pink salt keeps or retains the minerals that are in it during the formation of the salt process, right? So prehistoric era, right? Like millions of years ago when the salt was formed or whatever. Uh, supposedly it has more minerals in it than the regular old table stuff. If you have to use regular table salt, right? So let's say you're going to go and get yourself some Morton's or whatever. At least try to get the iodized stuff because iodine is good for the thyroid, right? Keeps the thyroid functioning properly. Talk to your doctor. Make sure all this stuff is good for you regardless. Anyways. I use the Himalayan pink. Last ingredient is water, right? Water should be distilled, alkalized water, filtered water if possible. You know, if you have to use tap water, please make sure your tap water is regular. I'd rather use bottled water than the tap water, honestly, because who knows what the hell, the hell is in tap water these days. But the ratio that I'm using is something like 30 to one. So let's say I had 300 grams of water, right? I'm gonna put in 10 grams of the Himalayan pink salt. Basically, what you're going for is, let's say you had two cups of water, right? So this is a cup, right? Let's say I had two cups of water. I basically want something like two tablespoons per cup of water, if you want to measure it out that way. But what you're going for, the taste that you want is when you taste your water, right? So take a taste of it. It's not quite as salty as the ocean. It shouldn't be that salty. Like if you've ever tasted an ocean salt water before, it shouldn't be that salty, but it should still have like enough salt in it to where somebody said, hey, I think there's a lot of salt in there. That's a good thing. Anyways, three ingredients, pretty simple. So the process is uh, basically shred it or dice up the cabbage like lengthwise into like nice big chunks. So as you can see, it's about the width of my thumb. I've got it into a nice big chunk. Handy dandy food processor. I've got it set to slice. So as you can see on my blade, my top blade, I've got it set to slice. What I did was I took out the two blades in the middle because I'm not trying to pulverize the cabbage. I just want to basically slice it so that it's very, very 
uh, thin shards of cabbage. So as you can see here, that's the kind of consistency, the kind of texture that I'm going for. Every once in a while, I'll pop a clover to a garlic in there. You know, if I want a little more bite or a little more zip in my sauerkraut, that's totally fine. Uh, sometimes I leave it out. Anyways, mason jars. Mason jars are my best friend. It doesn't matter the size or the volume of the mason jar. Basically, you're just trying to take your, your sliced cabbage and put it into the mason jar about an inch at a time. So about one inch, right? One inch at a time. Then use a wooden mallet of some sort. This is actually a baby Louisville slugger that I'm just basically putting in there and pound, pound, pounding away, right? These things help too. They basically help to collect your cabbage as you put it in there. So I'll show you real quick. If you take your cabbage and then drop it in there, it basically has a, has a place or like a funnel for the cabbage to go. So basically you get about an inch of shredded cabbage there in at a time. Then go ahead and take your wooden mallet and pound, pound, pound. So if I take my wooden mallet, right, and I go in there and I pound, pound, pound down, I'm basically trying to pound it and to bruise the cabbage. I'm not trying to like really squeeze down in there. I just want to bruise up the cabbage a little bit. So then what I'm going to do is, after I've got uh, that inch of cabbage pounded, I'm gonna add in about, I'd say about a half an inch of the salt water mixture, right? So just put it in enough so that, as you can tell right there, it just barely covered the top of the cabbage. Then repound, so basically take my Louisville Slugger, right, and pound, 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 pound. Basically just making sure that I work the salt water into the red cabbage. That's an important step in the process. Okay, then, just keep repeating the process. So an inch more cabbage, right? If I want to use my funnel, I can use my funnel. So an inch more of cabbage in there, right? So you, when I say an inch of cabbage, I'm talking like, whoop, it just went up an inch. That's how I know I got the inch. Do some pounding with any kind of wooden implement. It doesn't have to be the Louisville Silver. It could be the back of a handle, you know, it could be a wooden spatula, uh, whatever you want to use, whatever is available. I'm pretty low tech. Those are facts. So this is what I'm using. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. Once I get to about right here, right, which is like the highest line almost in the thing, that's where I'm going to stop. So depending on the size of your mason jar, you basically want to make sure you leave something like three inches of space between the highest level you've gotten with your cabbage, right, your compressed packed cabbage and the top of the lid. The reason for that is that through the process of fermentation, What's basically happening is, is that the cabbage is absorbing the salt water and it's going to swell up. So this whole stack of cabbage in here is going to rise and swell up. So if you fill your cabbage to right here, as it swells up, it'll swell up to almost the top of the jar. Let's talk about lids and that kind of stuff. There are some people that put on, there's a special mason jar lid that has like a vial with some water in it. And then basically it allows the gases that, that are a byproduct of the fermentation process to bubble up and out of the mason jar. If you have one of those, great, more power to you. I'm low tech, so I use the screw top lid. What I'm basically doing is, after I've gotten my cabbage up to the top, I wanna pour just enough salt water on top of it to just barely cover the top of the cabbage. So as you can see on this jar, for instance, it looks like there's a good ratio of, of uh, red cabbage sauerkraut to my water. And if you see, if I press down in here with my fork, see the water level is right there. So that's about where you want to be with your water level and your red cabbage. So the water should just barely cover, right? Water is barely covering the top of the red cabbage. That helps keep the whole mixture, let's say, a little safer and less likely to get bad bacteria in it. It's basically the short answer. Okay, so basically I'm going to cap it. In my case, this is the low-tech way, right? I don't have the bubble thing with the vial and the water. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the lid on just very loose and just leave it alone. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to leave this on my countertop overnight the next morning, through that first day process of fermentation, the gases that are in there need a place to escape, and they're going to escape out of that loose lid. Remember, the lid's loose. 
it's not completely loose, but it's just on there and just a little, just a little like, not even, I'm just doing this with one hand. That's how tight the jar should be, right? Just like that. So just barely on there. Okay. Second day, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lid off, right? So this is, this is about 24 hours later. I'm going to take my mallet again and press down and push, 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 push. Because basically I want to I want to pick up the void where there may be still some trapped bubbles and gases that are in there through the process of fermentation. I want to allow those gases to escape freely and basically recompact my mixture. So I'm compacting it down to back to down here again. It may not have risen at all that first day. Totally normal. It's fine. But on that second day, I just want to make sure I recompact and repress everything down again to it's back to like, I'd say three inches from the top of the jar. So whatever size jar you're using, just make sure you've got at least like three inches of space. Okay, lid goes back on again. Same thing. Remember, I'm tightening this lid just tight enough so that it barely catches. So right there, it barely caught. And that's where I want to leave it. And that's how it is. What that's doing is that that is allowing the, the pressure that's in there, the gases that are forming during fermentation to escape and preventing any bad bacteria from going in there. Another 24 hours overnight on the countertop, outside, non-refrigerated. Uh, honestly, this goes faster in the summer because the temperature is a little warmer. It takes a little bit longer in the winter. But basically, you're repeating that process day after day after day. Eventually, you'll get to a point where your red cabbage goes from this to this beautiful color this beautiful like crimson red uh this was the raw this is the finished product so you, you have an idea of what you're looking for when you see your finished product it's delicious every cup of the red cabbage stuff i believe that article said had between 600 to 700 milligrams of vitamin c in it so it's always a good thing anyways that is the entire process if you need to watch this back and go through parts and this and that and whatever, pretty simple. Shred it, pack it, salt it, water it. Basically, you get the idea. Let it go. What I do when I think it's about ready, typically four days, even three days, it's ready to eat. Like it'll turn that color after about three days. I just leave it on the countertop and I leave it on the countertop the same way with the lid just barely on like that. It has stayed on my countertop for a month at a time, I think, without having any bad bacteria there, any spoilage or whatever, just make sure to check it every day. So as long as you're checking it every day, your red cabbage should be going good. I don't think you'd want to leave it more than a month anyway. I'd probably eat it before that month is over. Usually I go through a jar this size. All right, this is a pretty big, pretty big jar. I'll usually go through a jar this size. It takes me about two weeks. So when I get pretty low, like when I get down low to about right here, I'll transfer it to another jar like this. Make sure there's enough water to cover the salt water. Remember, make sure there's enough salt water to cover just to the top of the cabbage, as you can see, like so. See, the water is just covering the top. So as long as I leave that water and that juice in there, it'll usually go... I'd say like the month or so, give or take, and I'm checking it every day. Anyways, there is a like button over here. There is a subscribe button over here somewhere. Down in the description there, down below, there is a link to my Facebook page. That's Cooter Malloy Product Reviews. Make sure you visit that Facebook page if you like the content that you're seeing here and you want to see more of it. There's also some links to some cool, pretty cool products down in the description there down below. I'm Cooter Malloy, and I will catch you all on the next one.